Broadly speaking, Eurodollars is a term used to describe US dollar deposits held at non-US banks. The name is a bit misleading because, yes, you can use Eurodollars to describe US dollar deposits held at European banks, but as strange as it may seem, the term can also be used to describe US dollar deposits held at, let's say, Asian banks or any other bank that is not located in the United States. The Euro part of the name primarily has to do with the fact that after the Second World War, more and more US dollars were used abroad to fund the recovery of Europe, both directly through the Marshall Plan and as a result of the fact that recovering European companies exported to the wealthy United States and received, you've guessed it, dollars in return. In the end, it became obvious that there are two markets for US dollars. One, the domestic market, so dollars used within the United States, which are regulated by the Federal Reserve, FDIC insured as far as deposits are concerned, and so on. Two, euro dollars, so US dollars held outside the United States and not regulated by the Federal Reserve. They can be considered, let's say, riskier dollars, with both positives, such as higher interest rates, and negatives, such as less oversight and greater volatility, or the fact that deposits are not FDIC insured, and either insured through local programs or not at all. Needless to say, as the dollar established itself as the dominant currency out there by far, the eurodollar market grew spectacularly and is currently in the double-digit trillions. From the average citizen who chooses to save in dollars due to not trusting the local currency, to banks which lend money in dollars outside the US for the same reason, demand for US dollars has skyrocketed since the Second World War. As such, a straightforward conclusion arises. Whenever we analyze the dollar, it would be a huge mistake to only look at what's happening in the United States. Including the Eurodollar dimension in the equation is most definitely a must.